Okay, let's talk about RDS. So I'm sure everybody using RDS, a lot of company using RDS, and one of the competitor RDS is Citrix, okay? I have, I provide a lot of training uh, on my website and on Udemy, of course, on uh, Citrix. And Citrix is, uh, uh, of course, uh, a way that you can share virtual apps and virtual desktop, but we're talking about RDS. So RDS is a Windows Server rule that provides much more than just remote desktop. Similar functionality was known as Terminal Services, TS, but RDS has evolved dramatically since then. RDS includes six role services that enable you to create a scalable and full-tolerant RDS deployment. It provides multi-user with a virtual desktop from a single server. Okay, so just imagine that you have a single server or more than one single server, of course, and you don't want to install the application anymore on your workstation. You want to install this application on your server. So you will install all your application like Office, like SAP, like Business One, like Adobe, like Photoshop on one or more server, depending on how many users you have and the power of your server. If you have a very powerful server, RDS, for example, I know that TS, remember, for example, if you have 188 gig and a lot of CPU, you can answer a lot of application on this server. So we're talking about, you know, accessing this application or the desktop of the server from a single server. And these applications are installed on the server, referred to as the remote desktop session host, RD session host. And to connect to the server using RDP, everybody knows what RDP, okay? RDP is used between client computers and the RD session host. You can also have VDI pool desktop. So every user has its own VM, it can be pool or dedicated. So here you have some example here, okay, about the client here. It can be a client with HTML5, it can be Windows, it can be uh, Mac, it can be iOS, Android. And here you have all the roles. We'll speak about this role here. You have the web access to access through a web page. You have the broker. Broker is a solution that will do load balancing between multiple or server. And of course, the broker also will reconnect to a session. If you leave the session, for example, Monday, you will reconnect to the session on Tuesday, for example. And you have the getaway. The getaway is a, something quite fantastic. It's to avoid using VPN. So you can be everywhere in the world, and through the getaway, you will connect to your broker and to your RDS host. After you have your, you can have your desktop, okay? You can have VDI apps, and user profile file server is something very nice. So the profile will be on the VHD. So here you have some example. I am here everywhere in the world, okay? I can access through my remote desktop web, web access here. And after that, I will connect to my remote desktop broker, okay? And he will do load balancing and you have your SQL database here. And here, of course, you have licensing because you will need to buy some RDS Cal. And here you have two solutions. Remember, you have the remote desktop session host where you install the application on your server. And you have also the remote desktop virtual host for VDI. Okay. So let's see the different roles that you have. So you have, of course, the RD session host. The, so this is the most important one, okay? So the server can host Windows-based program on a full Windows desktop. User can connect to the RDS session host server, run application, and use the network resource that the RD session host offer. However, access is dependent on remote desktop connection, RDC client. So RDC session host is a required role services in a session-based RDS desktop deployment. You have the other one, is the uh, remote desktop virtual host. So this is for virtual desktop for VDI, okay? So VDI can be pool or a dedicated session. And you have the broker, okay? So this role service manage connection to remote app program and virtual desktop and direct client connection request to the appropriate endpoint. It also provides session reconnection and session load balancing. For example, when a user disconnect from a session and later re establish a connection, the RD connection broker will service ensure that user reconnect to the existing session. That's better. 
you have the web access. So this will provide user with links to RDS resources, which can be remote app program, remote desktop, virtual desktop through a web browser. So a web page provides user with a customized view of all RDS resources that have been published to the user. And this role service supports organic resources in the folder, which allow admin to group remote applications in a logical manner. After you have the remote desktop licensing, RD licensing, this is very important because you will have to buy client access license, RDS CAL, that are required for each device or user to connect to the RD session or server. And you have, of course, the last one I talked about before. I talked about it before. It's a remote desktop gateway. So with these role services, authorized remote user can connect to resource on the internal organization network from any internet connection devices by encapsulating RD, RDP traffic into HTTPS envelope. And you have the RDC client, okay? So the RDC client is, you know the RD, RDC client, you know what is it, of course? So it's, it, it, it can connect to a physical desktop, remote desktop, or remote desktop session host. So the RDC client is included with the Windows OS and it's also available as a separate download for additional platform like Android, iOS, and Mac OS. RDC detects connection quality and available bandwidth between itself and the remote desktop computer. It displays the bandwidth with an icon on the connection bar that is similar to a signal strength meter. So let's see the RDC deployment. So you will have to decide between session-based or VM, VDI deployment. If necessary, if necessary sorry, RDS deployment can include both session-based and VM and VDI. So RDS offers two types of deployment. Session-based desktop deployment, where you have one server and you have a full experience and all the client will connect to this server where you send the application. Or the other one is the VM-based desktop deployment. It's VDI. So this deployment type provides users with access to a full Windows kernel operating system such as Windows 10 that run on a VM. Of course, when you deploy all this, you must determine server hardware and network resource requirements and determine how client access RDS. So let's go back to the old role. So RD session host. So RD session host is a role for Windows based program on a full Windows desktop for RDS. So this is a Windows 2016 or 2019 server. And this role service is mandatory for every RDS deployment that provides user with session-based desktop, with full Windows desktop, or with remote app. An RDS session host server accepts user connection and runs programs. To use the RDS session host server, you must consider the number of installed application and type of resource use, number of connection client, and the type of user interaction. An RDS session host Planning focus on the number of concurrent users and workload they generate, of course. So if you have, for example, two fortunate users and they are running, for example, Office application, you, you will not have just one server. Maybe you will have, you know, I don't know, five, six, seven, or ten server. And your broker will do load balancing. So when you connect, the broker will see which is the server with the most resources available. The broker. During RDS deployment planning, you must design a server to host the remote desktop connection broker. This is mandatory okay, for each RDS deployment and provide user with access to remote app program and remote desktop connection in addition to virtual desktop. The RD connection broker role service will also provide RD web field. This role service manages all aspects of session, including load balancing connection between multiple RD session or server and reconnecting user session to existing session on virtual desktop, remote desktop, and remote app. So when a user initiates a session, RD Connection Broker receives a session request which query the database to determine where there is an existing disconnected session for that user. And now we have the web access. The web access is the RDS role that provides you for a single web portal, you can see here, with available remote desktop, remote app program, and VDI. You can access RD Web Access from any web browser. When you select RDS resources, the RDP file download and RDC automatically open it. RD Web Access can also publish a list of available RDS resources and RDA web feed that can integrate with the Windows Start menu. So you can have all your applications in the Windows Start menu. Wow, that's nice. The RD Web Access role services is a mandatory part of each RDS deployment. 
and it installed the web server role and IIS as a prerequisite. Okay, so let's talk about profile. You know, the profile is very important because it's where all your profile is saved. So you can use standard user profile when they sign locally with their RDS user profile. A second profile is for when user signing in the RDS session host. Creating the two profile for user enable them to have two different and independent user state. For grouping user, this is the most important, this profile should be stored on a full tourism file server. When user sign out, any profile data can be removed from the RD session host server. However, to provide a smooth signing experience, grooming user profile can be cached locally on the RDS session. For me, one of the most exciting solutions is the profile disk. A profile disk are used by RDS in session-based or VN-based session to isolate user and application data from each user in separate VHD PHDX file. The file must be stored in network location, and when users sign in to the RDS session host for the first time, the user profile disk is created and mounted in a user profile pass user username. So during a user session, all change to the profile writes to user VHDX, and when users sign out, their profile disk is unmounted. Of course, when you use also RDS, don't forget to do further redirection. So further redirection, okay, uh, change the target location for a specific folder like document folder in a user profile from local add disk to network location. So when you save something on the, on the document folder, it will save in real time on the server. Cool. And let's talk about the last one with the RD gateway. So remote desktop RDS can provide us an environment for users who connect to an internal network. However, many users need to access their environment when they are not connected to an internal network, for example, while working from home or traveling on business. You know, now with the COVID, you know, everybody works from home. No need to install a VPN. Provide secure connection for a public network. RD Gateway must have connectivity to both internal and public network to be able to proxy and inspect RDP traffic. And a more secure deployment is to put RD Gateway in a permanent network. In this design, RD Gateway listens to HTTP traffic on the internet facing interface and for RDP traffic on the LAN. And RD Gateway is optional. So you can see here that we have here connecting outside, he's doing the tunneling, and here it's 3389, of course. And of course, money, money, money. <laughs> yeah. If you want to use remote desktop, you must properly license all clients that connect to RDS. Every client must first have a license for the locally installed operating system, and every client must also be licensed for using Windows Server Remote Desktop Services CAL. And of course, you must buy RDS CAL, which allows client to connect to a session-based desktop deployment of RDS. After installing RDS the first time, you have an initial grace period of 120 days before you must install the valid CAL. Remote Desktop Licensing RD Licensing manages your RDS CAL that are required for each devices or users connect to an RD session host server. We have two solutions per user. This licensing mode gives one user the right to access any RD session host server in their RDS deployment from an unlimited number of client computer devices. The other one is per devices. This licensing mode gives any user the right to connect to an RDS session host server in, in an RDS deployment from a specific device, so it's less expensive. Okay, now we're going to talk about the VDI in the next section. Thank you.